Hi, you're listening to Creatrix Culture. I am your host, Sarah Wolf, and today we are with Nina Collier. She is the co-founder of Love and Logistics, which is a holistic business consulting, and she's also a fellow sound healing practitioner. We met randomly, not randomly, in a course that we're both taking right now called Compassion Keys, and for our practice to be um, certified in this course is we had to do one-on-one healings with other participants. And this is like 300 people from around the world that are in this course. And we were magically paired. She lives in Denver currently. And through us doing these trade sessions on each other, we discovered that we were both sound healers. This is about a month ago now. And then I was like, will you come on and do a podcast with me? Because I think it would be so fun. I haven't talked about sound healing much on here to have a fellow healer that we can give information, swap stories, and just dive down the really wonderful rabbit hole of sound healing. So welcome, Nina. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm beyond excited to talk about sound healing, to geek about tunings and what is sound healing. So thank you again for having me. Yeah. So I wanted you to share your story of how sound healing found you on your path. You you used to live in LA too, which I love. So we have that in common. And you studied under some pretty well-known sound healers, which is so great. So yeah, why don't you share with us your your story of how it came to you? Yeah, sound healing has been one of the greatest tools um, that has changed my life. And it's kind of crazy how the universe works with all the synchronicities that come in. So mm-hmm. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of music, especially R&B music. And do you know Janae Aoko? I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Aoko. But no. she's she's this really popular R&B artist. And one day when I was in Puerto Rico with my mentor helping her uh, lead retreats, I was scrolling and I just saw her play these really, really beautiful bowls. I was so fascinated. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I'm familiar with like those white generic frosted ones. Bowls. Yeah, the frosted yeah. bowls. So mm-hmm. I was like, this looks entirely different. So I did some stalking of her account and finally located the woman who sold the bowls. So that kind of was like the portal of being able to explore what is sound healing to the point where I just followed my intuition. I was like, I need to train with this woman. I need to get a set. I don't know why. And it slowly expanded into getting over 15 bowls, getting a gong and taking all these different trainings over the course of three years of working with really, really awesome mentors and uh, practitioners who work with sound healing. And because of that, I'm beyond grateful that it's changed my life in so many ways of just bringing so much more balance in my life. It's introduced me to kind of the theories of quantum physics and mm-hmm. bioelectric, not bio- yeah. bioenergetics. Or oh, energetics, yeah. Yeah, so it, it takes my passions of science and biology and bridges it with the things that I'm already drawn to of the spiritual side of things. Um, which has transformed my life of healing a lot of trauma. And it's also gifted me the opportunity to be able to now hold space for others and Mm -hmm. clients and best friends and friends and even strangers who have never um, been introduced to sound healing to create this place of safety where they can just kind of dive and explore and move energy and heal the way they Mm -hmm. need it. Yeah. And like we were talking about before we got on here about it's, uh, it's like, you know, it's been around for since ancient times, like there's Tibetan bowls that are like anciently made and sounds been, you know, I feel like a lot of the knowledge of sound has also been hidden or deleted. And it's like an ancient healing technique, but I feel like it's also having this resurgence. So it feels new again. And the more I'm diving in and studying and different information since I've started going through this path is that it's like the beginning of the healing. 
as we heal the biofield, right, we can get to the biofield with the sound and move the energies out before they even land within the body. And I think it's like, like completely, like amazingly <laughs> mind blown, right? So you know, like, I mean, like literally your mind, your electricity, like your, <laughs> your, your field is like, whoa, like, what is this? Because it's so new. But the beautiful thing about this type of work in this day and age is we have the research, we have the tools to explore that and have this proof of, of things changing within our systems, within our biology to be like, mm -hmm. Hey, this isn't just like woo woo spiritual talk. It's, it's actually science. It actually is science. Yeah. And as science opens itself and allows itself to, um, go more into the field, right? Like they can measure it. They can, now track it or do whatever they do in the science world to make it like be more legit and not just some you know hippy dippy etheric stuff right um so wait what year did the bowls and all of this fall on your path so what in total have you been working with sound or so, even studying yeah probably in 2018 is okay when I discovered the bowls um and then enrolled in training 2008 19, 2020, where I did multiple levels. And then just over the course of like every summer, I'd take two or three trainings to the point. Okay. Expanded into gong, into I built my own drum, going into like rhythm, how that can bring coherency in the body. And my favorite, which are the bowls, the crystal alchemy bowls. Yeah. I um was going through a divorce and there was, what year did you live in LA? It was 2021 for a few months. Okay. So um, in 2017 for like, I don't know how long this place was open. It's called Den Meditation and they had two locations in LA. Um, I feel like they opened maybe sometime in 2015. Then once the pandemic hit, they closed and now they just shut down all their brick and mortars here. And she still does stuff online. But I was going through a divorce at the beginning of 2017. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Den Meditation because I heard so much about it. And you could purchase a package for the month and you got unlimited everything. And so I was going there and just like, I mean, every day I was at Den Meditation doing meditation. and it was a Saturday night and there was a sound healing by this shaman lady named Susan Paul. And I went, I, it was free. So I signed up for it and I bawled through the, out the entire thing. The room was packed with like 50 people, you know, we're just like stacked like sardines side by side. And the whole, from the minute she started and she has all alchemy bowls as well. Right. And I'm just like, what? And then every time I go in, I was just like, Wah! like just messy crying. Right. But it really helped me like, um, go through this process of this divorce. And then I started working with her, um, one-on-one -on -one and learning from her and like showing up to her smaller things. Cause she did a lot through the pandemic still. So like, it would just be four of us in the room or whatever. And that's when like it I don't even know I couldn't even tell you like the exact day that it pinpointed was like you need to do this and one thing that came to me is over the years though in one of my Doreen Virtue like oracle angel decks right I would always pick this card make music make music and I was like okay I played the clarinet growing up can't really hold a tune as of yet still singing right that's not one of my strong points I have a great booming voice but when it comes to that it's just like I don't know I think I was beheaded too many times in past lives where it's like <laughs> they really severed my vocal cords and um and I'm like make music like I picked up the guitar for a while but I had to stop at bar chords like I couldn't get past bar chords I'm like, this is so interesting. And then all of a sudden I was just like, you need to do sound healing. And I was loosely looking for a set of bowls and I was open to really anything. And then um, 
I'll show mine later. But then I was guided one day, I was taking a nap and spirit told me to wake up and to go to my friend's store down the street, which is called Almond Garden in Sherman Oaks. And they're like, go to Almond Garden. You need to go get your friend Kimberly a birthday present. And I was like, no, I'm sleeping right now. Like I'm taking a nap. And they're like, no, you need to get up right now and go to Almond Garden and get Kimberly her birthday present. And I was like, Kimberly's birthday present can wait. I need to sleep. And they're like, get up out of bed right now. I was like, fine. So I get up, I drive down the street, I walk in the store and they have this set of Tibetan bowls that I've never seen this style of bowl. I've seen it there like before and I like thought about buying them, but I've never seen them really anywhere else. And they are brown with like purple etching and they're gorgeous. And I was like, I look at all of these today. Like, I think I these are my bowls. And then this guy comes in the store and he is talking to the owner and we're both friends with the owner, but I've never met this guy before. And then this lady walks in the store and I'm like, okay, there's all these people here. So I start shuffling the bowls up to the desk because I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna buy these yet, but I don't want either one of them to buy them. Right. Or even one and like take from the set or whatever. So I bring them up to the, the, the counter and then the the guest guy that walked in he was like oh wow he's like those bowls are amazing and then he starts teaching me about sulfeggio frequencies and as he's like talking about that that the other lady in the store comes over for like the teaching and he tells us the whole conspiracy around frequency 440 and what the real frequencies are and that he's a musician and he just tuned all of his music, even old music that he's ready to um, 432 or 396. Like he, he was talking mostly about those two frequencies and how different the music was. And he's like, oh, these definitely play like good solfeggio frequencies. And I mean, it was just like this really long conversation. So beautiful. And I'm like, I think these are my bowls. And he's like, no, these are definitely your bowls. And he's like, it's so weird. He's like, I wasn't going to come here today. And I was like, I wasn't going to come here today. And then the other lady was like, I wasn't going to come here today. And we're like, we all came for this like divine appointment of meeting and a teaching. And then that sent me home with my bowls. And I started with five bowls. And now I have like 12 different styles and stuff. Um, and then it just kind of carried from there. And I took my teachings from Susan. And then also I just started um, doing it for groups in Joshua Tree because this is still in lockdown, but we would have parties. Mm -hmm. And my friends really would encourage me every time we'd have a gathering to bring my bowls and play. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. And they've taught me, like, they all have a personality. They all, like, speak very loudly and tell me what they want and what to do. And it's been, it's been a really interesting, like, journey with it. And it's been now, um, I've been doing sound baths for over three years. That is amazing. I see so many synchronicities with, like, kind of my journey and, like, the, like I literally think the bulls choose you they choose the owner and mm -hmm. it's just based on the dynamic of what you need what they need and how they want to be shared like how they want to be merged with your energy when you play them so mm -hmm. that's really really awesome to see like all three of you having like oh I wasn't going to be here meeting together and creating this very synchronistic magical moment for you to take those home and to yeah portal for you to be able to become this this beautiful practitioner with sound. Yeah. And it's been, it's been a powerful journey and it was just my birthday um, on Monday and on Sunday night, I had like a sound bath birthday party. And this is the second year I've done it where like, I just like really brings me joy to bring the people that I love into my home and do a sound bath and then have that community gathering after and it's just the way that it's expanding community and bringing people together. And I, every time I do it, um, I have a pretty big li living room. So I do them a lot in my home and just witnessing 
people forming friendships and hanging out. And one reason why I love doing them in my house than outside of my house is that we sometimes have tea after, or like if they're slow to leave, like there's no rush for anyone to go anywhere. And we can just like, there's always like a smaller, there's people that want to leave after because they're in their thing and they need to like stay in their space. And then there's people there that want to commune. And then we get to just have beautiful conversations and extend the healing process. Um, it's, it's just so gorgeous. It really like fills my soul that, yeah, these bulls have chosen me to do this work and, and create this environment. Yeah. And, you know, it's not even, it's, it's to the, the music that comes through you when you play, but it's also like, you're saying that space of building community with a lot of strangers or friends or close friends, even family. Like I held a sound bath where my partner's family came. They had never experienced anything mindful. They're like, what is a sound bath? I, I showed them a picture of the bowl and they kind of freaked out. They're like, oh, this might be too much for me. But I was like, no, yeah. just in, just relax, really. It just it, It's just a place where you can have a spa-like experience. So for mm-hmm. them coming in and then them having these very, very, very magical experience where his sister was like, yeah, for the first time, like my whole life, I've had anxiety, my brain shut off where I could just fully just be okay. And then his mom had this like crazy, like experience of healing trauma and going through so much. And she's like, I need to go home. It was beautiful to see because I know for her, she's a very, she's a person that wants to move and evolve and grow but finding the time and the place for that we could give to her through holding that space and then his dad had all these mystical experiences of talking to his father who passed away through a tree and it was just so many synchronicities um and being able to experience that space post of just connecting and using this factor of the bulls common denominator Mm -hmm. we're here to grow we're here to heal but I also support you I see you in your journey what are these things so it's it's really beautiful and for me it inspires me to create more space where there's more community building so for example me and my partner we're building next month a it's called like a dinner supper club where you come together you have dinner um, with a themed lecture that we bring on mm. guest speakers. And then afterwards, after the connecting, talking food, you get to digest with a sound bath and you have that space of let's do something more. Like let's expand this into like passions or places and things to do to create and also to connect with others. Yeah. So you, you got to throw food in there. <laughs> Totally. I was hired to do a theater retreat. Um, and I had to drive a little bit to get there. And it was a theater group that was in LA, but they went down to Temecula to do this retreat. They entered the, uh, rented this huge Airbnb house. And, um, I came in towards the end of their retreat and just showed up, did a sound bath for a couple hours and then left. And a lot of the people on that retreat in reflection they're like I wish she would have came we had her come the first day because all of the create like it just started juicing so much creativity for people that they wish now that they didn't have to go home either later that night or the next morning that they could have brought that because it it opened up space for them that they could have brought then these juicy ideas into the retreat weekend that's so cool. But it also kind of makes sense because, you know, with sound baths, for me, it's it's this place where you could really surrender to the subconscious mm-hmm. and allow yourself to be in that state of like, okay, I'm open. Like, let's move things the way they need to move. And so by releasing things, you have more room for others, for creativity or whatever your intention is. Do you experience that too? With yeah. Those- Absolutely. And I've had similar experiences as you as my best friend in Minnesota. um, I brought her daughter was going through a really hard time. I was coming to visit and actually spending time at my cabin, but I bought, I brought like just a a little, not my whole set, but just like a little um, stack of my bowls because they can go into each other. And I threw them in a backpack 
they're aluminum. So like, and then just brought them with me and did um, healings for just her family. And she's the same as, is it your, your uh, partner's sister where like, she has a lot of anxiety, very busy mind. And she said for her, and this is interesting because like, sh- I've always been spiritual. I've always walked this path. She, we're like apples and oranges in our friendship. We're two totally different people. Like she's a food scientist and I'm just like, la la la, I'm go, you know? And I've told her stuff through the years and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. You know, then yeah. after the healing, she's like, I totally get everything you've ever talked about. And she's like, I've never in my life had my brain stopped. She's like, Sarah, my brain stopped. And she was like, my, like it, like I was watching her. And like, when she came out of the healing, she was just like in like complete, like she had to take a moment to like comprehend what just happened to her. And she's like, what? And she's like, I honestly have a whole new respect for you and the work that you're doing. And she then came on board. And then last um, summer, no, no, not even last summer. I don't even know my dates. I don't even know what day, even I know it's January and it was my birthday, but I don't even know where we are in this world. Um, In November, my grandmother had passed away and I was going back to Minnesota for a funeral And we arranged for me to do first time ever a sound bath there for a large group. And we got a venue. And um, it's funny because a lot of those people, like, they're like, what are we getting in water? Like, they didn't even know what like a sound bath was. They're like, what are you going to do to me? Um, But then she was on board to help arrange this beautiful evening that I got to share with strangers and close friends that I've known even since like elementary school and bring this to in Minnesota. And there's, I think there's some practitioners there, but still there's a lot of people that don't, that don't really know what this is. And the, 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 the way everybody was after it was over was just like, when are you coming back? Like, I can't even like just completely shifted. And I think you know, for the people that either like your partner's mother who wants to do these things, but doesn't allow time in her life to do them. I don't know what the father's like, but let's say just for the story, he's not even open to spiritual stuff to have connection. And that happens to people like they're like, I don't know, I'm just here. I don't really believe in it or whatever. And that it opens the vessel to have a spiritual experience. Exactly. It's such a tool to and and in a very gentle in a way like a not even a non-fufu way right like it is a scientific way to bring people into whatever needs to happen into themselves into out of themselves into and it's so fucking magical (laughs) It, it really is and it's crazy because i i I have people come in and I could tell they're very, very logical. Like they need the science, they need the answers, black, white, et cetera. So it's like being able to say, hey, okay, this is what it's doing to your brain waves. It's slowing it down to delta, theta, where you can truly relax and they get the, the mechanics of what the fuck we're doing mm-hmm. to be able to then let go of the analytical mind put that aside and just fully be present. And that's when I've had the most amazing stories of transformation and just like, like mystical things that happen to the most logical people. So I'm like, see, I'm not that crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Or like people that are first timers. Like I had this kid once never been to a sound bath, like in his early twenties, um, newly sober. It was, I did a sound bath for one of my friends, uh, like first sober birthday parties. Right. So a lot of people in the room were in the program and it was so funny at the end, he sits up, he's like, did anyone else hear the woman singing? And we're all like, nope, (laughs) but I'm glad you did. (laughs) you're not crazy. Don't worry. (laughs) You're not crazy. Stuff channels in like things happen. Aliens show up. Ancestors show up. Like 
messages are being had things are i mean sometimes we're blowing the roof off this place like it gets it gets crazy right yeah my friend was talking about she had an experience during meditation where she just like felt this like burst of air in her face and then someone just whispered to her she's like that was a fairy and so it's just like you get a wide variety of things like magical things that can happen in basically the spaces that we hold it's it's awesome <laughs> it's so awesome it's so awesome I love it so much I love hearing everyone's um experiences after or days after right and how it shift them and and I've had people you know the so much energy has been moved out of them that they actually don't feel good after even as the practitioner sometimes I won't feel good after if I'm even helping move a lot of energy in the room right and there's a lot that that group that day is just walking through some like stickier stuff um but it's all natural because it's just stuck energy, you know? So I tell people, I'm like, you might get a headache after you might have a pain for a couple of days. This is showing you and it's just trying to move out of you. So don't attach to it and allow it to keep moving. But sometimes you might actually feel uncomfortable after or during pains do come up in people and that stuck energy. Um, on my birthday, one of my friends called me last night and she said, yeah, Cause I go around with this huge Tibetan bowl and place it on people at the end. And she had me put it on her right hip yeah. um, and kind of place it more in the area. And she's like, I walked through something this week where in my own healing process, where I really found that I was abandoning myself and my little girl was coming forward to let me know, like showing me in different spaces and places of how I was doing self-abandonment. She's like, and then during the sound bath, that was really coming up for me and spirits talking to me and showing me things in that arena about how the different places she's done that. She's like, and then I started feeling nauseous and then I got the excruciating pain in my hip. And I was like, well, that's showing you that in the place of your body where that all the years of self-abandonment has happened and the energy and the emotion that has, um, you know, come up with that, that you squashed and pushed away and didn't want to look at, right, is all being held in your right hip. And now that you acknowledge that, now it wants even more of a voice. So it's going to come and start, you know, being loud in that area. And then having me put the bowl there and doing energy work around it and helping it move, then we are able to fully move it out of the body. That's really, was she pain-free at the end of the, mm -hmm. see, that's like the cool thing about this work. You, you can't really explain it, but you have situations where it's like the hips, it's funny, the hips are the place where we store those energies and by using sound, you can create this one-time experience to eliminate. And that's happened in so many situations where someone will come in with like a bad like shoulder or like pain in their leg. And then they get up and they're like, what, what happened to it? But then it's also interesting because you have those situation situations where the pain is so amplified. But one of my favorite uh mentors slash I really look up to him Dr. Joe Dispenza when mm -hmm. he talks about going through these coherent healings where we'll have cages of people around someone and send coherent love it's basically this like beautiful healing session um people will be in excruciating pain and it's because it has to get worse before it can get better because it's trying to call your like you said call your attention for you to focus on so you can move that energy the way it needs to be moved mm -hmm and not re like ingest it in a sense and put it somewhere else or have it go deeper. And then like, I tell everyone before the sound bath, I'm like, if you need to cry, cry, like these, these bowls are going to go in, they're going to dig some stuff up. If you need to yell, yell, if you need, I mean, I've had people wail. Sometimes it's like, it sounds like even an exorcism's happening, right? Like so much stuff. I'm like, we want to get it out of the body, get it out of the body. Don't hold back. Cause you're scared. I'm like, this is a safe space. Like, and I ask everyone here to create this, to continue it, to be a safe space so that we can express because you hold it in and you don't express it or you don't allow it to move. That's when disease happens. Exactly.
So by moving it, and we get to help facilitate that movement to help people, like sometimes we don't need the story that goes along with it. Sometimes we do. And a lot of times we don't, we just get it out and it doesn't matter anymore. It was in the past, but that residualness of some trauma or whatever it is gets, you know, kind of tucks away in there Mm -hmm. and And it's going to, yeah, go on. Oh, it it gets tucked. And I think by having the sound, you help build the circuitry for the body to allow it to move. So the places of, look, I'm abandoned, I'm not loved, but having this nurturing sound create that for you of like, no, I am worthy. I am love. You can move that out of it, which is Mm -hmm. really cool. Um, And I, with Western medicine, I don't really see, this is the only kind. Yeah. Yeah. I think Western medicine, I always say there's a time and a place for it. If my arm gets chopped off, please uh, reattach it, (laughs) you know? Um, But I think it does a, a really big disservice to what is really out there that actually can go in and what is preventative, what doesn't even like you can, like I was saying earlier, stop things before they get exacerbated or even fully a land into the body. And it comes in later as a band-aid that's just masking still the problem and we haven't gotten anywhere. And then over time, people are like, well, I, you know, they were healthy and then they dropped dead or they, no, they weren't healthy. No, they didn't. You know what I mean? Like it's mind, body, spirit, you know, it's bigger than one thing. It's bigger than, a, you know, a pill that you're popping. It's bigger than it's there's more things that are happening. And I've been having this conversation a lot lately. It was, it came to me a little while ago of how growing up and it just, even in school, like, we're just like these little, like pieces of two-dimensional paper. Right. And we're just taught on such a two-dimensional thing, like of how life works or how our bodies are. And we have just like these little paper dolls. Right. And then as like you expand and you like realize like how multidimensional are and like how there's so much more to this than, oh, I have this, I'm going to go to the doctor and they're going to give me a pill. And then like, oh no, like, it's like, this is trauma from when I was two. And this happened over here with this. And I'm unbalanced here because I need these types of herbs. And then this is like the, you know, like for like, this is a small thing, but you know, like if you drink coffee, that blocks you from vitamin C. If you don't have vitamin C, that blocks you from iron absorption, right? So it's like this chain. It's chain and it's bigger and it's so many more different angles and faces than just like this one thing of how this entire world works. Mm -hmm. And no, too, like my experience, like I went to art therapy grad school for about a year. And a big reason why I had to discontinue and drop out was because I was just seeing how it was so limited of, okay, you have these symptoms. I'm going to put you in a box. And because you are now in this box, you get this, this pill, this type of treatment and this, it was just so structured, so black and white to the point where I was like, this is not, this is not what's going to help me. And I don't see myself helping others with these techniques. Mm -hmm. So leaving grad school and then finding a passion for yoga and all these mindful, holistic kind of practices, that's what changed me because it was so intuitive and it was so customized for my body and my experience and what I needed. And rather than labeling me as damaged wounded it it saw me as like I'm whole and I'm healed let's allow your energy and your body to match that truth of who you are rather than Mm -hmm. being labeled as something's broken right I'm really wanting to go away from that labeling it really dropped into me um right before Christmas of the of like calling ourselves broken right and how like we're not broken on any level we are misprogrammed right so like all these things that you think you are it's like no you were programmed a certain way from when you were little and you're taking on other people's programmings and you're running things by 
the external and it's reflecting back to you a wrong programming and like we are come into like we are light we are perfect light and sound vibration like if you put it in water it makes like a perfect like sacred geometric shape right yes. we are mostly made of water and we are light and you add sound to that and we are perfect beings right but it's all this other shit that makes you think that you're not perfect and we're not broken we're just misprogrammed and we're just gonna start unraveling that stop speaking the negativity to ourselves that we are something that we're not that is actually one of the things i had a problem with when i went to aa when i was like 24 was i was like i i didn't know a lot then but i knew enough to know I can't come in here every day and say that I have a disease yeah. and look at myself that there's something wrong with me. I actually realized I'm like, I just don't have tools. I don't have the right tools. I'm a super empathic, hypersensitive, emotional human who doesn't have the right tools. And so in order to calm my overly emotional body I would have a drink to like just be able to walk through the world yeah and so I had to I had to unplug from that environment because I'm like I can't tell myself I have a disease every day that's not going to heal or evolve me that's no, actually going to create more yeah it's reinforcing the story that you're broken you're damaged whatever and you know the power of our thoughts and intentions because when you think about the brain and when you have a thought in our consciousness it's like a receptor and it submits it out into the universe for us to build the environment that we're surrounded ourselves so if we say you know i'm wounded i'm pain like my i'm stressed you're literally bottom physically creating this environment so when you can return to that space of like no I'm not I'm this I'm this and this and create that through these different techniques of even just adding on meditation yoga mindfulness where you get to the core of who you are mm -hmm. um, that's where you can sh like have these huge shifts of changing your reality and physical body absolutely yeah. Absolutely. My friend and I were just having a conversation yesterday of she is feeling she's a workaholic. So she's walking through that path right now. And um, we were just talking about that deeper of when we do, she's actually the same person as self-abandonment um, because that's kind of going correlation. So we're having this big talk last night about, you know, the sound bath and we hadn't caught up in a while. So it was just like all the different pieces. And when we distract ourselves so much and we walk through life and for her, it's what she feels is her biggest distraction is workaholism, right? So she feels like, oh, she's in financial. So she's a financial advisor. So she can work around the clock and wherever. And, you know, they get tax season and things are always busy. It's always go, go, go. Yeah. That she feels instead of sitting sometimes and doing the work, right? or doing something that's mindful, she distracts herself by jumping into her work and doing her work more and doing her work past office hours and doing, you know, whatever. And where I really resonated that with is old me, I, I do identify with that was just so busy and so needing like I, I didn't allow myself to heal. So even like after my divorce, yes, I would go to the meditation and whatever, but I also still had a very busy life. And now I'm like carrying this apartment and I have a dog and I have all these, this overhead that I was having help with having the overhead to now it's just me. And I really like love where I live and I love the community that I have here. And I have a great apartment that I wasn't just going to necessarily move just because I'm broken up with my ex right and i don't feel like i really took the time and the space i would do my pockets to really go deep and do some really 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 deep healing then um you know the pandemic happened and i didn't work really for a year um 
I would work my little side things, but I was uh, serving tables during that time and I got furloughed from the job for an entire year. And I was doing like a more like a lot of research and like study, right? So I'm still not really like landing in a deeper healing. Like I'm having healing this in different places. And then I go back to work and I was like, this does not resonate anymore. Like all of this, like I can't go back into this rat race environment. I've been around spiritual people and doing some really deep, shifting and and work on a certain level and just being in community like-minded people like just really going at a, a slightly slower pace and to rev my engine back up and go at a faster pace is really jarring to me so i ended up quitting my jo like job that was like paying my bills and i'm like i i do other stuff i do voiceover obviously i do my healing i do sound bass i'm like but i if my main source of income, I, I can't, I can't do that right now. Yeah. It was a really interesting journey coming out of that though, because all of it last year, I think was of the most challenging years of my life in the sense that spirits, like they told me to quit. So I did. And they're like, and now we're going to play a little game called <laughs> we're going to like take all your financial away from you. Like we are going to bring you to the rock bottom of the rock bottom. We are going to learn scarcity. We are going to learn poverty. We are going to learn being like not paying your credit cards. We are going to learn having to ask for help. We are going to learn everything. And, but also what's going to be so fucking great about that is we're going to take everyone and everything away from you. So you're literally sitting in your apartment by yourself facing the depths of the depths of the depths of the shit that you were spending so much time being distracted from that the only way we could get you there is by literally you can't even call a friend to go to lunch, right? Because you have just enough to like get by. And I have to say now, I've come out of that energy. The healing has happened. The where I was meant to go has happened. I feel like I just ended like the world card and the tarot deck and I'm back to the fool, right? The cycle is over. This is like decades of a cycle. I went to some really deep, deep, deep ass places but it was meant for me to get there and get through was to be lose the distractions yeah. to get the deepest healings. And it's crazy because the universe, if you, if you don't choose to do that, the universe will create louder and louder and louder. Mm -hmm. point where It's like, you're not listening. So let's fuck it all up and just cut it off. You have nothing but you and the work mm -hmm. that you do. And I can relate to that on so many levels because I've experienced that almost every two years when I, I'm ignoring things and I know I am, but I'm choosing other things rather than fo focusing on that. The universe will hit me with like a truck and be like, ah, no, figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Grateful for it because you get out of it. Right. And you get the deepest shifts. And some people might even experience that with disease, right? You might get a, like in a big car accident that lands you in the hospital for five months, or you might get cancer that brings you down to slow your pace um, or whatever that might look like, or it could be a divorce. You know what I mean? That in some, that you weren't expecting to shake you up, to have you face things, to, to shake up your world because you're being asked to do something more expansive and bigger or listen to yourself or acknowledge deeper parts of yourself. And I feel like in just our little pockets of holding sound baths, right? We're doing like on a microchasm in, in, in chunks of time for people and holding that space that maybe it doesn't need to be so catastrophic exactly. <laughs> to your life and life changing it's you can have these little micro doses to the point where then it introduces you to even more so on their own they can explore and explore what sound healing is to them maybe learn about acupuncture learn other modalities that they're aligned with which I think just opens the door to their journey healing their healing journey of rather than having one like you said big thing just hit them all at once 
Yeah. Cause that's, we don't need to, we don't need to have that. Right. And I really think there's, that's an old programming too. Like there's a lot of verbiage I've really started to like rewind from of like no pain, no gain. Yeah, that's kind of bullshit. Like (laughs) let's drop that one. You know, like we actually can go through pain-free. We can still learn our lessons, but they don't need to be so in your face. Like they can be gentle. We can have a gentle life, right? Every day spirits asking us, do you want to go this way or this way? Do you want to take the easy path or the hard path? And the easy path isn't the wrong path. It's not even the lazy path. I feel like that's also like a, 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 a mind fuck programming. Like we've been programmed to think that everything needs to be catastrophic and hard. And it really doesn't. It can be gentle and easy and flowy. And but it's, yeah. yeah. It's, and it works. And then sometimes it might work even better than taking the hard route. And that's what I love about the compassion key that works we're doing is you can heal with light. You can heal with love. You can heal with compassion for yourself rather than having to put yourself in this corner and cry it out and isolate Mm -hmm. yourself from the world. Like you're, you're just choosing a different vibration to move, to evolve in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, in working with frequencies and sound and vibration and everything, is such a great gateway to start people on paths that are cuz we're just we're helping getting out some debris that doesn't it's it doesn't need to be there it's like just filler right it's like we put it as filler and we were unconscious about it or we believed something that is untrue and it's like okay let's get out the debris let's shake that away so we can get into the deeper stuff that that is asking to come forward so we can even be done with that from our lineage from our parents from our siblings from you know interactions when we were children to then get back to our innate being right our light being so then what i had this thought of like okay let's say all of society halted We no longer had to go to jobs we didn't like. We no longer needed to use money to pay for things. And I was like, we're we're so in that energy of that life. And it's an untrue life because it's all made up, right? I was like, would we be bored? If everything got like, what would we do during the day? And then spirit was like, you would meditate, you would get to know yourself, you would commune with nature and you would find places and expansion that you as a species right now, there might be like a few little pockets of people on the planet that have gotten there, but you don't even know how far you can go because you're, you're so living in this distractive state an unhealed state and running around your own little mind hamster wheel yeah that i really do believe we are like some of the most powerful beings in the universe and that's why the suppression is around because if we fully remember who we truly are to the nth degree we will be able to think a thought and it's sitting in our hand we will be able to create in ways that we could not even fathom right now. Like we're not even close to seeing how far we could go. Mm -hmm. No. And it's for me, I see people getting trapped in entertainment or different things where I'm like, you have so much power, but it's hard as a society because in some ways, yes, we are growing as this collective consciousness and evolving and, you know, reflecting on things and, debating if we want to continue this pattern or not but in some ways there are factors that do limit us so I think if anyone has the opportunity to just step aside and totally disconnect from the world either 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 if it's like social media your phone friends family and to just really reflect on who you are and what you want to create Mm -hmm. I think that's 
it's that spark of life that can really change something for someone and that's honestly why I like doing retreats like I'll do seven day meditation retreats where we just completely disconnect and because you're always on the go and you have lectures and meditation especially with Dr. Joe Dispenza Mm -hmm. you're disconnected and the cool part is that he'll plan it around events that are big like the elections or big holidays Mm. so that you fully truly disconnect and are not influenced by your external world but you're influenced by the internal world Mm -hmm. I think that's on a micro scale, what a sound bath does. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I wanted to go, you had some great questions. I want to look at your email real quick because I, that you, we wanted to talk about some points and there was one of them. Let's talk about with sound healing, like the in different instruments other than bowls that can that can have the same effect on the body. I know you touched a little bit on drumming. Mm-hmm. There's also tuning forks. You can have rattles, um, even instruments that mimic sounds of nature. So like a rain stick. Um, I have a rain ocean drum. Mm-hmm. I have this thing in the corner. It, it mimics thunder. So for oh. me, at least, yeah, you, I can, I don't know if it'll, play. yeah, play it. It's very interesting. Does that go through? It started to, but then what's funny is you froze. Oh, no, it's not going through. When you talk with it, one thing about zoom, I learned this was actually when I did that retreat. Um, for the theater people, because I was like, oh, I've had people once zoom in to a sound bath, but they didn't hear anything. And they, and one of the guys that does the sound, he told me, well, that's because Zoom cancels out things that it thinks are background noise. Rather than the actual voice. Yeah. So I heard it briefly in the beginning. So I can try to play again and talk a little bit. Yeah. But it, it sounds like thunder. Yeah, I can hear it when you talk with it. Yeah, that's really cool. So basically random instruments. You can even use your own voice. That's what I love about sound healing is you can hum or you can sing or you you can do mantras and basically create harmony and coherency with your voice to tune your your body. Mm -hmm. The instruments, I think, are unlimited and it's based on intention of are you creating the sound journey with these different instruments or are you laser focusing the energies of like, okay, I want like the note of F. So you create a set with bowls that are in tune and of scale of F, which is they say our heart chakra. Mm -hmm. So it's really amazing of the diversity of like, when you think about like, what is sound healing? What are instruments included? Yeah. And then you have the solfeggio frequencies that you go through the different levels of frequencies, which do different things to the body as well. And then those frequencies, um, and then each bowl is like, will be assigned to a different chakra, right? With the notes. And so then basically it's like, you're working in all these different spaces and places that are kind of like getting everything. I went through my bowls and I found actually a great site online to figure out which frequency each bowl is, which sofagio frequency. So then I could see like in one of my sound baths, what are we working with? And then I found that with everything in my gong, my gong in the different ways you play it actually hits every single sofagio frequency, which is so cool. So I'm like, even with that alone in the room is going through the whole scale for people's bodies. And then each bowl is hitting, you know, all the chakras and it really is encompassing like the entire total body healing. Mm -hmm. And I do the same format. For example, I start with the gong and that hits because there's so many tones just overlap. You're having micro just everything being targeted. And I think of it literally as the ocean washing all that gunk away. And then that leaves space for availability to tone with the bowls because um, when they recorded the sounds of the crystal alchemy bowls or just those in particular, 
you know, with sound waves, they go up and down. Mm-hmm. Movies, there's just a straight line because it's so pure. So 99.9999% pure. And then when they looked at the, the shape, like those geometric shapes of what sound looks like when it hits water, they're all in sacred geometry where just super coherent. So like you said, when you hit our body and our water is our biggest conductor, it's targeting all the cells that are not cohesive, that are in quote unquote disease in our field and our cells to tune it up to that coherency for that healing. So a beautiful and amazing and so fun. Um, I was talking about before we jumped on here too, what is her name again? Eileen, I'll get it. I don't know why I can never remember her whole name. Eileen de McCusick, right? And she does, she has two books about uh, healing with tuning forks, which is another layer that I definitely want to start working in with my private healings. Cause she talks about how she in resonance of the body can hit the tuning fork and the way it bounces off the person in different areas she can find in that area of the body stuck, but she actually hears it within the fork. And I'm like, really like geeking out, like, I need to get tuning forks like last week so I can play around with that. Cause I'm so interested to hear that resonance like that. Um, well, and it, cause she'll hear the tone and throughout the whole field, she can identify, okay, this happened when you were five years old, because with our karmic layer, it just layers on the years, like a tree when you cut it in half. So that's where you can really pinpoint. And then because now you have that focus, you can address the the story, whatever information to give it love, compassion, to move it the way it needs to out of your field. Right. And that's what's so beautiful about all this and working with the compassion keys, right? It's like, it can, it's a standalone um, healing, but also layering it with other healings is like a perfect way to either like end a session with which which something came up to end it with compassion key or do a dive before the session to bring the compassion key and then whatever's moved there it's like it, it works in like both ways as a capper or as an intro introductor into then going into the body and the biofield and start moving the energy and it's funny because how did you find the course Randomly the compassion Facebook me too. And then what's so funny is like, I saw it over time and it would kind of call me, but I was like too busy to like tap in and do the research. And then one of my girlfriends sent it to me actually an Instagram then. And I was like, okay, well, if Naomi's sending it to me, then that means I need to look in it deeper. And then I jumped on the calls and then the first call I'm like, Wah! yeah, um, right? like five hours. And I had a very similar experience where I saw it on Facebook. I was like, this is kind of bullshit. Like, who are they trying to market to? Like, I'm a woo-woo person. Okay. Yeah. I kept seeing it and seeing it. And then finally I saw free intro. So I was like, I'll take it. Yeah. And I clicked on it, joined it. And if for five hours, again, I'm bawling. And I was like, this feels like such a call. So in like, how would you describe kind of the compassion key and how you incorporate it to your work. Cause I like doing it prior. So I've, I've experimented where I'll do it prior a sound bath to really unlock and to the point where like the person's bawling. I'm like, okay, this is a perfect space to come in with the sound and nurture it and move it. So how would you describe it and bring it into your work? Yeah, I've, well, what's interesting is I did it, bef- I've done it before and it was powerful because then when I'm doing one-on-one, so then when we go in the body, and do the work within the body and then bring the sound into it. Like, like I said, it's like, we, we kind of have a more like laser focused of what we're working on. Right. So I can go into the spaces and places of the body where that trauma or those memories would generally like hang out even within the chakra system. So if they went through some disempowerment stuff and that came up in during the compassion key session, then I might spend more time, like, let's say on their solar plexus, right. And, and just really working that energy to rebuild their power, the power center. Um, but then I had a friend visiting in town 
last week and she came in for my birthday and she's she's open to stuff but she doesn't walk a big spiritual path right but we were just doing different things around town and dinners and stuff and i said you know what i would love to gift you and she couldn't make my sound bath in minnesota i'd love to gift you like a private session while you're here just for fun and because i love you and i've known her very for a very long time we worked together back in minneapolis in a very small bar so we would work four days a week together, 10 hours a night. Like we know each other very well. And I've known that she's walked through some things when she was young, but um, we never fully talked about it. And she actually got a hysterectomy when she was 15. And um, so I knew she wasn't able to have children and, and, but we never talked about it. And what was interesting about her is she would constantly like break her ankles or fall down or all this stuff. Right. And I would say back in the day and, and I wasn't really doing healings then, and I'm just studying stuff and, you know, I'm still pretty in the middle of my path. Like I didn't ever actually ever think I was going to take a bigger role as like a sort of facilitatory teachery type person. Um, but I was, I was curious and studying and just, it was only just for me and my own self. It wasn't really to like share out, but I would say to her, I was like, I feel like you really need yoga. Like, I just keep feeling like you need to get in your body. Like, that's why you're disconnected from your body. And then I, when she comes out to visit, like she's in a really great place in her life. She just got married in September and everything is pretty kosher, right? She's not going through some big crisis. She didn't come out here to get away from anything. Her husband was going to Vegas for the weekend and she just wanted to come have fun and be in LA. And um, so when we, before, when we were connecting, before I put her on the table, um, I was like, I'm just, I'm not feeling that there's some big thing that I wasn't feeling a compassion key with her. I wasn't feeling like we need to dive into some, things. I was like, let's just get on the table and see what wants to come up. And then all of this stuff came up around her womb space and around the trauma from, and I didn't, I still didn't know the story, but we still like really worked in that area. And then spirit was having me connect like meridians for her and bring energy channels, opening up channels between her top half and her bottom half. Right. So I was being led to do different work to connect the energy again. And then it wasn't until like after, well, it was kind of like somewhere in who even knows, like, cause I go up into the ether when we're doing this. So sometime between her sitting back down after and me being instructed to do all this stuff, it came to me, like, it was just like the biggest aha moment of like, that's why you break your shit. That's why you are, you, because of the trauma that happened in your midline, you won't go past, you won't, the minute you get down there, you're out. Yeah. Too much trauma. You are very young. You, you know what I mean? That's a big thing to go through when you're young, that you all of a sudden have to now at 15 years old, think about that. You don't get to have kids and all this stuff. And they cut you open. They ripped your shit out that's so traumatic, right? Your so you just, covered. yeah, you just bounce back out. You bounce back out. Well, no wonder why you're always breaking your ankles. Your body's yelling at you like, Hey, down here, like you're forgetting about us. And then your mid self is like, Hey, I need you to connect to me. Like we need to have a conversation. So it wasn't until after that. And then after the healing, I let her tell me the whole story. And I'm like, tell me the whole thing. Um, but because she was in such of like more of a etheric space and feeling like really good and juicy and soft, I didn't want to go into compassion keys then. And I said, why don't you go home, sit with this information and let's bring it into compassion keys after. And we're going to go in now then and do, we can just do it on zoom and we'll jump in and do some trauma healing and move that energy even deeper. So that's kind of like, I think there it's becoming what it's showing me. There's, there's no rules. Like everything is a case by case. Based on their person, their energy at that time, because like you said, it's just going to shift 
So coming back and using that as the tool to access information. And it's funny because legs and shins are connected to first center and then the womb is second chakra. So obviously it's, you can't feel anything below that. So you're just going to be flopping around trying to get your attention to move it up, to clear that space above it. It's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really excited to, to dive into that deeper with her and see if like how that unfolds for her. Right. Like I love journeys. So I'm like, I can't wait now to like, see what journey happens with her. And like her husband won't even let her hit wear heels. Like she is forbidden from heels. Right. <laughs> and I would love to see her be able to wear heels again, you know, cause she's a very yeah. feminine woman, you know? So it's like, it, it would love to be able to see like, okay. And that was all just from clearing energy and healing trauma. Right. That's so awesome. Yeah. Just, and to have it a close friend and you're able to provide that space for them for that transformation to the point where they'll, they'll probably wear heels. Yeah. I'm going to hold that vision. Right. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's the, I feel like this work is just ever like evolving and shifting and changing. And have you found even like with different groups of people, your bowls play differently? Oh, very much so. So I'll have, and it's, it's cool about sound healing and the bowl process with me in terms of picking what feels right. I kind of tap into the energy of what I'll be working with that today. And then I'll look at my bowls. I usually have them all on the shelf and I'll be like, what, who wants to be played today? And I can just hear them screaming. Like, I want this like that. So then I'll create the other bowls to pair it with. And then when I bring it into the space, they play completely different based on what I think the people need as a collective. So there are times where the gong just roars and I can mm-hmm. feel it pushing things out and then you play it my my set and it'll be very etherical angels people say they hear angels see all these different lights but then I'll bring the same set and the gong to another place and that wants to play quiet and then the bulls are very loud like they're screeching uh-huh to really get into let's say the heart or like fine-tune the body and so I just sit there and play I'm like okay I'm just channeling like we're good and holding that space making sure I'm embodied to allow the bulls to do the work because I tell people that I'm like the sound does the work not me not this yep. room it's you and the bulls yep absolutely and they know, like, it'll be like, play this longer. Don't stop yet. Don't move on. Okay, move on. Do this. Like I had one time, I tell this story a lot. Cause I just, I find it so interesting. Like I keep the whole journey to be as like fluid as possible. So people can go into that really deep theta Delta state. Right. That's very important to me. And one time the bulls were like, ding the bowl. I was like, no, because we're in it, right? And they're like, ding the bull. And I'm like, I'm not going to ding the bull. They're like, ding the bull. I'm like, I'm not going to ding the bull. I love when I fight with spirit because I do it a lot. And they're, and they're like, ding the bull. And I was like, fine, I ding the bull. I'm like, that's so fucking disruptive, you know? And then so I did it and then I moved on. I might have like did it three times just to find some like, you know, balance in that whatever, not just one ding. And like, then this lady after we're all sharing she's like you know I was in a really bad space in my head and then you ding the bowl and it pulled me out of that space and brought me back to a better space and I was like okay sorry guys I'm sorry that I didn't. Why. okay trust <laughs> <laughs> you know more than I do in that moment because I'm all over the place feeling this energy over here moving the energy over here doing this doing that doing that and you're seeing something that I'm not seeing you know what I mean like okay I won't question you anymore I'll ding the fucking bowl the next time <laughs> No, and sometimes I've had situations where I move a bit and then the bowl clashes with another bowl so it's like a but yeah okay I'm sure that was on purpose like there's someone and then someone to two was similar come up and like you know when you had that like moment of disruption it made me realize like life has its imperfect moments and you just move on from it I'm like yeah <laughs> I'm so it's glad all, all intentional with with how it's played mm-hmm. so I have a 17 inch gong that I walk around with so that's my gong it's not on a stand and 
one time I'm like hitting and I'm doing the thing and I'm going over people and blah, 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 blah. And then the mallet hit the gong and it was like a cool sound, but I didn't mean to do that. So then I'm like, shit, now I got to incorporate that in there. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, I'm sure it did something. And then now I actually will purposely like not all the time, but like hit the mallet on the side because it's the, the resonance that it sends out is super cool. But it's like, sometimes I find like, yeah, I like something messes up, but then I'm going to play it off later to like do it again, even sometimes to just like make it sound like. No, it's like the universe's way of throwing you another tool in your toolbox. It's like, fuck up. And there's a reason why you're fucking up because it's a tool that will help you. Yeah. And late, like my dog, she, I have a golden retriever. She's definitely a shamanic dog. She wants to be in the healings. She alchemizes healings. If there's a lot of energy moves, she'll throw up. Um, and lately she's been kind of being a little bit more disruptive than normal and barking, which is really interesting because there'll be many, many, many sound baths where she lays in her spot, doesn't make a peep. And something with energy, she's been a little bit disruptive. So on Sunday night, room is packed full. Another lady, like I let her bring her dog. I didn't know how that was going to work out. But I'm like, we'll try it. Like, this is more of a birthday party sound bath than an actual, like, you know, it's a little bit more loose, right? So we'll see how that works out. Um, so my dog she was, I don't know, she was kind of all over the map and she was barking more than normal. And at one moment I was like, Shh, you know, like, like we locked eyes. I was like, girl, like you need to like slow your roll here, you know, cause like you're being disruptive. But then I got feedback from someone and they're like, honestly, when she barked, it made me feel that we're safe in the energies that no matter what is happening anywhere, like she's creating an extra layer of safety that I can release even more. And then honestly, when you shushed her, I didn't want you to do that. I wanted her to keep doing whatever she was doing because I trusted her judgment. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I will trust then. Thank you for the feedback because I will trust her judgment as well. And that she's knowing and her intelligence and that she's knowing another layer that's in the space that I'm not sensing. So she knows what she's doing. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the core. I think of what sound is like anything can be healing, even an annoying crying baby or like the sounds where you're just like, Oh my God, like screeching. But that in some way is creating this disruptive flow of either moving energy or creating another type of space for something to transform. Mm -hmm. So with um, Geraldine Glass, who's the person I trained with my bull, she's a famous, famous singer, opera singer. So when she'd say just sing and it doesn't have to be in tune, the fact that you're just singing and activating and creating this disharmony where it's like, Ugh, you're expressing something and allowing something to move and shift. So something even more authentic can come through. Mm -hmm. I actually, like I spoke about earlier, I don't, I, I'm trying to reword that. I'm, I'm just going to say in my prior, cause I want to leave space. I, I was unable to hold a proper tone, right? Like tune, like not on scale, but what's came through me when just that vocals want to come out through light language, I've started singing and through light language, it doesn't require me to be in tune and it, it finds its way with the bowls. Yeah. So I find it easier to channel that by using light language than using anything in English. And it's became really powerful and it's became a powerful tool. Like if it I let it come through when it wants to come through. I don't do it just because to do it. And even when I'm going around and doing energy healing on everyone with the bowl and doing a little bit more privacy stuff in the space, different tones of light language come through for different people. And sometimes it does come through in a song. Sometimes it almost sounds native 
Echanti. Um, and it just, it, it, it shifts and it molds and it moves and it does what it needs to do. And I find like using that modality to allow sound to come through because it's so free form rather than getting stuck because you're whatever saying something in English and finding the words or like it might not it might be more disruptive because it might not make sense or you might be stuttering some word that you're trying to get out but having the fluidity of light language has become such a beautiful modality for me to be able to sing or melodically or even poetically or in a story way or even sometimes it's really like commanding right but it's wanting to get messages through to the subconscious rather than to our conscious and I really have enjoyed allowing that to come through that's super cool yeah I do the same thing with light language whenever it needs to come out it'll just come out and it's all based on the energies that you're working with and what it's needed to either alchemize or hit the subconscious in a different way. Whereas as a society, we say, okay, this is in tune. This is not in tune. It's pretty. It's not pretty. So being able to get out of that box and to be free flowing with whatever you need to do when it comes to light language or just how you want to tone. Like I love toning with the bowls. Mm -hmm. It's the most pure and beautiful thing, even though sometimes you can get really like, wow, that's intense or that's heavy or dense, but it is that way because it needs to be that way. That's right. That way. Yeah. And we're that once again, like if we're being toned to 440, right, we're being programmed to what melody should be like, even though that's a, like a, the tone of anger, it's the tone that's going against the universal tone, which is 432, which is the resonance of the universe, right? So how do we not know if we tuned everything to 432 even, that to our innate ear, what we've been programmed, it would initially sound out of tone, mm -hmm. but so it's perfectly in tone. And it's having the diversity of being able to embrace all those different frequencies and beyond knowing that you know it's not black and white we as a collective have said 440 represents this 528 has represented this but in the world of universe it's infinite all all those tones make us make everything so mm -hmm. when we just allow ourselves to be free flowing and you can take that outside the room of the the sound healing where, you know, it's just life and you move with it and you play with it, but you just come back to self, come back to like, who are you and how do you play in this world? That's all that matters. And that's what I love with my sound bath is like, that's my intention. It's just for a place to play, but coming back home to self. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about coming back home to self and yeah. And play and just, and then community, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it. Someone asked me, um, a friend of a friend messaged me. I do ozone therapy as well. I have an ozone sauna in my house. So he messaged me after and he's like, I'm interested in, in ozone therapy. And he's like, but I want to ask you a question. I was like, what? And he's like, why on your birthday did you, did you give a sound bath and not allow yourself to receive? And I was like, actually, like it's that complete opposite. I receive so much from being in community, from witnessing healing and watching people's expansion, like fills my entire soul. I didn't feel like I was not receiving at any moment, even though for an hour I was giving energy, mm -hmm. just having a room full of people that I love was like the biggest gift, right? So it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's like, it, it, it lights me up. Like there's, you know, I don't want to do anything else. Like I really love watching transformation and watching people's awaken journey or healing journey. It's just like it, like I get like so amped and giddy over it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's honestly, that's what you're doing to fill your cup is bringing that joy of just holding that space and being able to create that that's I think when we're in line with our purpose and what actually brings joy to us that that's when we have 
we can go the furthest. I know for me, it's, it's not exactly the bowls or the gong that brings me joy. It's being able to create that space, space for play and then allowing the things I want to do that are entwined with my passions to be incorporated into those spaces. So that's yeah. what fills my cup. So when I, I'm like, I don't care about the money. I don't care about anything. It's just literally being able to fill my cup because I'm doing what I love. And that's pretty right. Cool. And then when you're doing that though, all those other things oh. naturally come in because you're just an open field, right? Like this sound bath I did pay what you can donation for my birthday. Right. Cause I'm like, it's my birthday and it's a party. And I just, you know, it's, this is where I even give back. Like it doesn't need to be a financial thing. It's about, it's opening up the frequency and the energies for bigger things to come in and the money will follow or the things to be supported will follow as long as you just keep creating the space and doing things from the heart and the soul and following what lights you up. I got, do you want to, um, I want to show you one of my bowls real quick. So you have an idea what I'm talking about. So I have different sizes of these. They have little Buddhas in the center. Oh, cute. Um, and I have all different sizes of these. So they're aluminum. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and they go like, they get loud and they just like, like go, you want me to play? Yeah. And then maybe let's see how that works with the mic. Really technology. (laughs) (laughs) So that's why I recommend going to live events if you can. Yeah. I don't, I don't like to do the, it's, it's like some things don't translate the best over like I put up all I record all my sound baths I put, put them up on YouTube if people want to listen um but yeah it, there's something different about being in person and being in that resonance but like for someone like my cousin who was really interested and wants to go to a sound bath but she lives in Duluth Minnesota so in the middle of the state and I was like well let me look at you know, I'll look for you and see if there's any at some yoga studios or I'll do, you know, I know where to look to see if I can find you a sound bath there. And there's just no practitioners there doing anything. So it's like, it it makes me sad too, that there's spaces where people want to experience, but it's just not there yet. Right. As, um, as, as spread out. So like, I really want to like, kind of do like a tour, right. And just start going around to places and, and being able to offer it. That would be really cool. Show one of your bowls, one of your beautiful alchemy bowls. Yeah. I'm feeling my apophyllite lemon or gold and aqua gold. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful. Golds. It's really cool. It's duo uh flame so on the top it's yellow because of that aura lemon aura gold and then it's blue from the aqua aura and uh-huh. then the bottom is engraved with a triangle for the apophyllite so basically wow. you have different colors mm-hmm. they're a little bit different than the frosted kind of quartz bowls that you see but you have different colors like pottery. When you paint something, you flame these bowls in a like really hot kiln to the point where um, different mineral minerals, stones, etc., will just plop onto there and fuse. So the theory is that when you play these in their pure quartz, which is one of the strongest amplifiers, mm-hmm. like electricity, will amplify the properties of the things that it's flamed in. So if you have wow. it's full in the node F, it's going to really target your heart area mm-hmm. and give it yeah. that loving energy and nurturing energy, cleansing properties of the rose quartz. Do you want to see if you can play one, see if it resonates through? No. No. Try uh, going around once, see if that picks up. No. We try a lower pitch. Okay. Try humming with it. Did mine work when I hummed with it or no? It didn't make a difference. No. 
Do you hear this if I talk? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, so this is um, a tiger's eye. Ooh. It's, cool. it's super deep. It's um, in the, sh the note of G sharp. So it'll really target the throat, but also the endocrine system. I believe G sharp also um, works with the zeal chakra. Are you familiar with the zeal? No. What is that? Oh, girl, I'm going to send you a whole thing to read on it. Yes. Zeal <laughs> point is like it's a dormant chakra that has been dormant since the times of Atlantis and Lemuria and it's like it's called the well of dreams and the mouth of God and yes. it's a yeah it's really powerful and opening that um brings people to their higher gifts even more and even be able to speak even more of your truth Oh, wow. Do you know where that's located on the body? Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if you're able to see. Can you see the back of my neck? Yes. It's like in that. So ah. my head's here. So it's in that like divot, like at the base of the skull. Yeah. My, I've had a few practitioners talk about that's like the eye, like door of soul or something. So doing little practices, like if you're overwhelmed or in a crowd that you kind of want to cleanse the energy, you just wash it in the back with like sage or smudge it so that's really cool I didn't know that yeah so g sharp helps open it um this is pink tourmaline pink tourmaline you can place there helps open it clear quartz especially if it's double terminated so the two points you can place back there I run it up and down so it's opening up the channel um but yeah the more you open that and then now you'll know when you're playing G sharp, you can even put your attention into the room, right? To help them open it or have them start breathing into it and getting that dormancy, like getting the cobwebs out, start circulating the energy. And I have a whole thing all, um, I, I found some different teachings on different sites and then I kind of formulated it together. I'll send you a little document that I put together that kind of runs through That's everything so about it. Thank you. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Did not know that. Yeah. I learned it from, it's interesting because I learned it from the shaman I was working with because she taught me about the 12 in body chakras. Like you don't even leave the body and there's 12 and I could do all of them. And I'm like, where is this one that she was talking about? And I was like, couldn't find it. I spent because I did a 12 in body chakra activation one year for solstice in my Joshua tree tribe. We had a 24 hour solstice party. Oh no, that was the next year. But one year we had a 24 hour solstice party. It was amazing. But the next year we were just doing another tribal gathering. And so I was up scheduled for a sound bath and I was like, okay, I'm going to do like a zeal point activation for everyone, but also unlocking the 12 in body chakras. And I was like, but I didn't know what the zeal point was. I just knew it was somewhere in between the throat and the third eye, but I didn't know where, I didn't know what it was called. I couldn't remember. And I actually had a falling out with this shaman. So I don't no longer talk to her. She came on my path to give me the information. And then it was like, spirit was very clear. We were meant to part ways. I didn't listen. And then it got overly toxic. And then I just had to go, right? Um. So I couldn't call, couldn't call her for like, Hey, you know, and then I was like researching and I'm like going down rabbit holes. Like I'm typing in anything into Google, right? Like trying to figure it out. And then finally I found, I stumbled on the information of the zeal point. That's so cool. Yeah. It makes yeah. Sense. And then once I found that, then I just started Googling that. And then that's when I found different people giving different information that I could like really formulate it together and get a good understanding of what is this chakra? What is it about? And, and start working with it to open it. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'll send that information. Thank you. Well, do you have any final thoughts, inspirations, anything you want to leave everybody with about sound healing or anything? If you can go to a live sound bath, if not, there are plenty, I think of amazing tools out there. 
including both of us. Um, mm -hmm. Geraldine Class is a huge person I've worked with who does a lot of virtual events. And then um, the Copper Vessel, she's an amazing person, Blake Beast in LA as well, where she does live sound baths. So um, yeah, excited for you know sharing this information, sharing my background, kind of geeking out on my passion. So thank you for having me in yeah, yeah. talk and converse about all these fun things that yeah really also that often. <laughs> right do you want to like plug in and talk about a little bit about this new business consulting business that you launched do you want to share that with because if anyone's listening that is looking for your services we can put the the uh link to all your stuff in the um show notes yeah that'd be great so my background comes from a very strong design background with graphic design. And throughout time, I've always found myself helping out uh, people and entrepreneurs within the holistic industry. So I figured, you know, why don't I just have this offering where it's a one-stop shop for all their needs? And I partnered up with my boyfriend uh, about two months ago. So creating love and logistics, it's for a functional business, you know, you need to have your passions, your love, um, having great relations with yourself and your clients, but also coming from a place of something functional where things work and you have resources that allow you and your business to grow and expand the way you want it. So um, me and my partner created this beautiful business where not only you can come in if you're in the holistic industry to help build from idea start to finish of your platform, however you need to be expressed, but also give you the opportunity to kind of connect with yourself and your true intentions and be able to output that into your business by the mod modalities that we work with, with sound, meditation, mindfulness, and things like the compassion th key that we both connected on. Mm -hmm. So you can find out more information on loveandlogistics.com. It's L-U-V. And if not, if you're interested in kind of the sound healing work that I do, just my personal Instagram um, account, which is Nina S. Collier. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people that are in the holistic world or spiritual world when it comes to their passion and the business, there is like a huge disconnect or the, a lot of times they go through a lot of unworthiness of receiving money around it and like how they bridge that gap or they're just maybe not super techie or yeah. So having a business like yours is like really a great thing because I know a lot of people that struggle in all the areas, some of the areas where they just don't know how to get from A to B. Exactly. And that's what we do is we help you build a plan and a roadmap of getting where you need to go, but filling those places where I call you lack circuitry and we'll help you. We'll connect everything and get it going for you. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sitting with me today. It's such a joy. So like brings so much joy to my heart to talk about the things I love with people that love them too. And um, yeah, I, 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 I hope we get to see each other in real life and experience each other's sound baths one day. That would be amazing if you're in the Denver area, like I want them to come find you and experience you. That would be amazing. But yeah, thank you so much for taking your time and everyone for watching and listening. And we'll talk again soon. Bye. Bye.